This update for Rise of Kingdoms is going to be huge. We're getting a new civilization, a new KVK format, the ability to re-roll stats on armaments. Yo, we've got to review this whole thing, and I have some strong opinions about what this will mean for the game. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chisquil Gaming. And today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And you may recall long ago that I was in an advertisement for Rise of Kingdoms with the Pawn Stars, Rick and Corey, the TV stars, for the Egyptian civilization and its release into the game. So you know I'm hyped, and it's that time of year when we get a new civilization. It happens every summer. This civilization is Greece. Now, there are a number of predictions that I have for what Greece is going to be. It's going to be an infantry civilization. It's going to give you either defense or health for your infantry stat. It's going to have a bunch of base stats elevated for a special Spartan infantry troop type, whatever. And also, there's two buffs I'm expecting. First of all, we are way overdue for infantry rally damage dealt. I know that's not exactly perhaps on theme for what Greece ought to be, given that they've advertised so much like the 300 Spartans sort of a theme, but we need a rally sieve. It's just correct for us to get one already. So I would love for it to be 5% rally damage and we don't have an infantry troop training speed uh, civilization yet. We don't have one. We have Britain, which is archers. And we also have Germany, which is what you're more likely to use because it has AP recovery and also training speed. So I think that we're getting that rally damage, 5%, and I think we're getting the 5% training speed. And if it comes with anything else, that would be amazing, but it might be economic in its nature. So there's going to be a bunch of events that take place, and I'll read through this very briefly. There's going to be seven days worth of quests. There's going to be a Hellenic epic, chisel out and paint an epic tale. The Aegean Blooms, enjoy the beauty and redeem limited time rewards, protect the supplies, Soroli Assault, where you basically zerg down bosses, sign-in spoils for seven days, Tempest Clash, Alliance Quizzes, Music and Muses, show your community your creativity. I feel like that's like an art contest they'll probably do, not an in-game event necessarily. Um, collect Theric Staters. And claim, uh, okay, I don't know exactly what this is, but an event related to uh, collecting and claiming sculptures, all right? Maybe it's not quite like a 7K gem event, but probably an event that's got like a major currency and a minor currency, and you swap them out. You can get some gold heads, uh, a city theme, that kind of thing, right? But also, new uh, civilization always means a new epic and a new legendary commander. And those are going to be available very early in the game. We get Pericles, who can be acquired through Silver Chest, Golden Chest, and the Expedition Shop. And also Theris, Fyrus. I should have looked up how to pronounce these. I haven't yet. Leave a comment down below to let me know how that's pronounced. They can be acquired through Golden Chests, the Expedition Shop, Daily Offers, and Card King. Um, and Card King is something that's not really in Late Kingdoms. So that's kind of interesting. The Expedition Shop, I wouldn't read into that too much. I think that's just in the, like, the eight or so rotating slots where you can refresh it and spend some gems and you might see one sculpture of the legendary per year honestly um very very rare they'll probably show up uh also there's a new season of conquest story wow before i go any further though i mean i bet that these are probably infantry commanders that we're going to be getting by the way i don't want to do too much prediction because at the end of the day we'll find out in a week or two what exactly they are um, but there's probably a legendary infantry commander here, which could be really cool. One of these might be a leadership commander instead, and that would not surprise me at all because frequently with civilizations, we'll see a leadership commander show up as well. So we'll, we'll see what we get there. Uh, but up, up next year, new season of Conquest Story, Storm of Stratagems, pioneer event coming soon. It says, step foot into a distant continent where rising plumes of smoke herald a battle to come. All right, so it's a team-based system for this. All registered kingdoms are divided into classes, S, A, B, C, or D, based on your power. Kingdoms can form teams based on their classes. After teams have been formed, six teams with similar power will be matched in the same lost kingdom, with each team belonging to one of the six camps. 
Um, this probably has sort of matchmaking like King of the Nile in that regard, where you make your team and then teams get matched up for a KVK. And there's a stratagem system. In this story, you can equip a variety of stratagems, which provide permanent buffs for you and your troops, and you can select a number of different stratagem folios, each of which have different combinations of stratagem slots. Stratagems must be equipped to a slot that matches their type. I'll be very curious to see what this is. I like customization, but without seeing some pictures, it's hard to know exactly how it will work until we know what these stratagem buffs actually do, like increase counterattack damage or rally damage, or, you know, I'd be curious to see what they do. Could be a cool KVK format. Also, whenever your coalition is targeted by an enemy rallied army, you can launch a counter rally and a, a counter rallied army will immediately set out when it reaches its troop cap and all the participating troops have arrived. So nearly instant counter rallies is freaking huge. Also, you can make alliance arrow towers. In this story, you'll be able to turn your alliance flags into arrow towers. Arrow towers automatically attack non-allied cities within range, reducing their wall durability. They don't inflict any casualties, but it gets you ported away. And I can tell you from this feature being in Call of Dragons that it's actually really, really good in Call of Dragons gameplay. Will it be good in Rise of Kingdoms gameplay? Well, I haven't done enough of, gosh, what is it? There's one of the heroic anthem variants that I feel like had players that, you know, got special siege commanders. And I feel like they did this in that KVK as well. And I don't remember if it was good or bad. So leave a comment down below and I'll link to that special KVK format card up in the top where I think they also had these arrow towers. Uh, now, this is the feature I'm probably most interested in, strangely even more than the new civilization, which is armament system optimizations. Finally, you can re-roll bad armament attributes. So you can transmute only legendary armaments to randomize their attributes. When transmuting an armament, you can choose to lock one or two of its attributes. Locked attributes are not randomized, which is great. And after transmuting, you can choose to revert back to the old attributes or keep the new ones. To me, this says you either get all the new ones or all the old ones, which is you know, not as good as if you could re-roll and keep individual ones, but whatever. So you re-roll, you keep all the new or all the old, and they said in a previous message that the cost goes up based on how many things you lock. So if you lock nothing, it costs less than if you lock one or two things, and you can only transmute 10 times per armament, okay? And transmutation requires these transmutation stones. The number of attributes you've locked, oh, here it is, uh, it will affect the number of transmutation stones you need, you can obtain these through the armament shop and events. I really please, I hope we can get many of these really quickly in the armament shop and that that gives you a use for the silver currency that currently we just don't have as much to do with. So um, how to get new armaments. Okay, this is interesting. The Lucerne Scrolls for kingdoms in season two, all the way to the season of conquest, formation choice chests and random armament chests will be added to the rewards for the Lucerne event available after the update. Okay. Um, so Lucerne Scrolls will give you more armament options. Silk Road for kingdoms in season two to the season of conquest, random armament chests will be added to the Silk Road event. The Civilization event series. Oh, that's cool. So the Civilization event series shows up very regularly and you, you know, gather a bunch of resources, buy stuff from the courier station to get a currency. So that's cool that it'll show up in there as well. The Lost Kingdom event series. So KVK, uh, you're going to get armaments in there. A new armament loadout feature. Bro, this is huge. You can save your armament setup for a commander as a loadout, allowing you to quickly swap between armament setups. That is very good. It is currently prohibitively difficult to be trying to swap armaments constantly, even though they represent a huge amount of optimization. If you're rallying or garrisoning, it starts to get really messy switching between them. Everybody needs loadouts, whether it's a canyon loadout versus a field loadout versus a Ark of Osiris loadout, rally and garrison loadouts. There are very few people who don't do multiple of these game modes using different commanders and combinations in each one. So great that we get that that um, ability to make a loadout. From here, Golden Kingdom. Thank goodness. Golden Kingdom, respectfully, is regarded by players, I think it's not controversial to say, as one of the most boring and um, too time-consuming events that sort of shows up on a regular basis. So we've been really needing this to get mixed up. 
truthfully. And it's like, the, I think the, the event that most people just skip, even though the rewards are moderate, because they just don't want to take what for most people is probably like an hour of time to get it done. So they're adjusting the structure of the blessings, adding 22 new core blessings categorized as normal attack, AOE skill, and single target blessings. They added 14 new universal blessings and deleted 11 blessings. I wonder if they deleted the ones that like everybody just has to take, like the one that does healing for your front row troops all the time, right? You get that and you just win. So interesting, we'll see what they deleted here as well. They adjusted the strength of some of the blessings. They increased the probability of healer huts appearing, um, enhanced their effects. That, that definitely should make it easier. Added an option to healer huts that allows you to draw an additional blessing instead of getting a heal. Mm, okay. Added an option to uh, the altars of Karak that allows you to heal a surviving troop instead of reviving a defeated troop. Wow, they're making this much easier, I think. Added post-battle stats. You can see what was happening. Added a chat system. Bro, I don't honestly know why we need to talk to people in Golden Kingdom, but there it is. A new chat system for it as well. I'm hopeful that what they've added over here is more strategic choices when you're getting your blessings so you can move it all in on a you know strategy of one sort or another. So we'll see what that looks like. Um, currently, it takes me about 25 minutes or so, 20 or less if I speed run it. Definitely looking forward, I think, to more people being able to really enjoy <laughs> golden kingdom oh man if i did a poll right now that said do you enjoy golden kingdom i think that number would be probably less than 20 percent um and I, I just you know glad to see they're working on it up next season of conquest improvements the siege of orleans story has been optimized rebalancing the difficulty of the siege of orleans campaign i'm actually really shocked that they aren't doing more yet to siege of orleans maybe they're just thinking about it but in my experience with this KVK, garrisons were indefensible. Like, you could not defend a garrison against a swarm uh, once you get all your auxiliary skills on the commander's extra skills. So I'd love to see them make a change that makes garrisoning possible in King's Land. The Warriors Unbound Story Optimizations. They've made artifact adjustments. Artifact effects now apply to museum relic bonuses in addition. Oh, interesting. That's good. They adjusted the duration of Lost Kingdom Chronicles, reduced the number of pa uh, level 7 passes from 6 to 3, and expanded the area of Kingsland. After the update, the artifact adjustments will take effect in all stories, while the rest of the optimizations will take place in new stories. Okay, so remember that the Warriors Unbound KVK format gives you an artifact, you pick one, and it changes all instances of whatever troop type to your chosen troop type. So the artifact would make it so that all instances of, let's say, attack and defense and health for archers could become cavalry stats or could become infantry stats. You would choose based on the artifact you've chosen. And what they've said here is that originally this also didn't apply to the museum buffs and now it will, which is cool. Um, so uh, Warriors Unbound is a KVK format I'm interested in, but I've not yet had a chance to play. From here, Alliance Mobilization updates. We have Alliance Mobilization going right now. The Registration Rules Adjustment. After the update, alliances that have registered can modify the list of participants. Thank goodness. That is good. Uh, quest Attempt Rules Adjustment. For quests that are completed but not turned in, you'll be refunded your quest attempt. I don't know why you have to turn in your quest. Maybe you could just turn it automatically, but you need to remember to turn in your quest once you do it or you don't get credit, which is a bummer. Quest content adjustment. New quests will be unlocked as you reach higher leagues. The new quests will earn different points and rewards. I was just looking at this wondering how it is we were going to get to the highest levels of this event and actually accomplish it. And I think we need more ways to get more points. Just a, just a hunch. Um, quality of life optimizations. After accepting a quest, you'll be automatically directed to the quest when visiting the event page. That's nice. Added the ability to preview the rewards of higher leagues, great. Added the ability to preview league promotions and demotions based on the competition leaderboard, cool. PC version optimizations, please optimize all the things. Optimize the display format of the profile page and the function of the escape key. You can, okay, that's actually, <laughs> I I mean, sure, it's an adjustment. Um, other optimizations, adjusted how some Ark of Osiris battlefield skills take effect to prevent overlap between the same skill effects. Okay, interesting for those of you playing Ark of Osiris. We'll see if, have to see the details on that one. Chat system optimizations. Added the ability to recall recently sent messages. Yo, you regret sending something? If you recently sent it, you can take it back. 
You can unsend a message. GG. <laughs> Added the ability to edit recently sent messages. That's cool. Okay. Added the ability to quote. Oh, that's dangerous. Yo. Use the quote feature to reply directly to another governor's message. Oh, okay. That could be fine. Optimize the layout. Cool. Uh, troop dispatch optimizations. Added a hold position after attack option in the settings page. After enabling this option, your troop will not automatically return to your city after defeating an enemy governor. That's kind of cool. When dispatching a troop to an alliance flag, alliance fort, or other buildings, you can toggle an option to garrison the troop in the building after the construction's completed. Yo! Let's go! Let me tell you something. Today, you build a flag or a fort in KVK that's contentious, and the second you finish the build, all the troops go out, and the enemy burns it for free! Hopefully, that won't be the case in the future, and if someone is the garrison captain, they will remain the garrison captain. When dispatching a troop to an alliance flag, resource points uh, within the range of the alliance flag will be highlighted. Okay. Uh, added a feature to troop markers. When selecting or targeting a troop within the troop marker, the troop marker will flash. Okay. And when viewing the city of a fellow alliance member, you can tap the alliance name on the governor profile panel to jump to the governor on the alliance members page. All right. Cool. Um, all in all, I think this is a really big update. Getting a new civilization and new commanders is huge. Do I think the new commanders are going to be game-changing? Realistically, probably not. I don't think we're going to be getting a Sun Tzu quality commander that can garrison and field and do all the things. So I think that's unlikely. And the legendary commander, I mean, look, historically, how good have they been? Let's take a look here. I would say the best one we got is Mehmed from the Ottoman civilization's release into the game. That's a good one. Um, other ones that we got, Ragnar was a bust, not very strong. And we cruise down here and Thutmose is actually really solid. People are telling me I'm sleeping on this commander, but we have enough archers already that I don't think I need to do Thutmose, quite frankly. So we could get some really awesome new commander. And if we do, I think we'll need to see what the museum buff is for them and if it is good enough. And the combination of those things, I mean, the reality is we could get a new meta commander. So you should, if you aren't already, hoard up your gold keys because they will eventually, if not immediately, be in those gold keys. And once they're there, like, yeah, you're going to want to pull for them. I got 4,300. Sheesh, I've been waiting for this moment. As soon as he gets here, I'm going to open all these keys. So consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss when I open these gold keys. And if you want to see the last time I opened up just a ridiculous amount of gold keys, card will be in the end screen for that in just a second.